Hello, this is Dr. Pollock. I'm frequently asked, what are PEMFs? This video is a short introduction to what PEMFs are. Pulsed electromagnetic fields is what PEMFs are, in short. So pulsed electromagnetic fields are possible based on the four forces of nature. The strong force, the weak force, the electromagnetic force, and gravity. Anywhere there is an electric field, that is where there is charge, whether it's positive or negative charge, there will be a magnetic field. We see this regularly with power lines and even with static electricity. I'll be discussing the types of magnetic fields, the frequency or pulse rate, the intensity, the inverse square law, and Faraday's law, laws of physics and how all these factors produce the benefits of PEMF therapy. There are two types of magnetic fields, fields that don't move and fields that are in motion. Magnetic fields that don't move, that is, for example, permanent magnets, such as uh, bar magnets or horseshoe magnets or the magnets on our fridges. Magnetic fields that are in motion, on the other hand, are generated by the movement of electrons which is what happens in wires carrying current. So equipment designed to carry current or to conduct electrical current through a wire, as in a loop coil, will create specially designed electromagnetic fields called time-varying magnetic fields or pulsed electromagnetic fields. PEMF therapy coils are designed in such a way as to maximize the magnetic field produced by the wires conducting current in the coil. They are usually loops of either a single wire or multiple loops of wire. So single wire or multiple loops of wire called turns. So the number of turns of a wire determines the intensity and the strength of the magnetic field coming through that particular coil configuration if you hold the output energy of the control unit constant. So the current traveling through the wire is varied uh, as other pulses as either pulses or alternating in the way that they're sent out into the wires from the control unit. The rate of change of these pulses or alternations in what it is what determines the frequency or the pulse rate of these magnetic fields. The frequency or the pulse rate determines the wavelengths of the magnetic fields produced. The wavelengths of magnetic fields determine to what extent the magnetic fields produced by the coils go through the body. Very short wavelengths, which are high frequency microwaves, for example, do not go all the way through the body. Because they get absorbed by the body, they generate heat. This is what happens in a microwave oven. Wavelengths typically used by therapeutic PEMF devices are usually under 1000 hertz and go all the way through the body without being used up or absorbed. Hertz, or cycles per second, is a term used to describe the frequency of an electromagnetic field, and waveforms are also used as well. The intensity of a magnetic field is important too. It is described as Gauss, or often pronounced as Gauss, G-A-U-S-S, -S, or micro Tesla or milli Tesla. So to put it into perspective, the Earth's magnetic field is about 0.5 Gauss or 50 micro Tesla on average. They vary around the planet, but basically on average, it's about 0.5 Gauss. Very high intensity magnetic fields that are used, for example, in MRI machines are typically around 20,000 Gauss or two Tesla. PEMF devices used for treatment varying in, are varying in intensity from under one Gauss to as high as 8,000 or to 10,000 Gauss. Another important and critical characteristic of a magnetic field is that it tends to lose intensity very rapidly with distance from the applicator. This is called the inverse square law, another law of physics. So, for example, a 1000 Gauss magnetic field based on the inverse square law will drop down in intensity to about 240 Gauss at one centimeter or about half an inch away from the coil, from the emitter. In other words, it will have lost about 75% of, of its intensity within one centimeter. So when PEMF 
treatments are considered for use deeper in the body than the skin or near the skin, higher intensity magnetic fields are necessary to do the uh, PMF therapy, to have the benefits that PMF therapy is designed for or desired. Another critical law regarding the use of PMFs is Faraday's law. This law states that time varying magnetic fields induce an electric field whose strength or magnitude, in other words, the intensity, is proportional to its rate of change. So again, time varying magnetic fields induce an electric field whose strength or magnitude is proportional to its rate of change, how quickly it goes up over what period of time, how high it goes and how quickly it does that. So this law has two components. So Faraday's law has two components, the induction of an electric field in the body and the need to consider um, how high and how fast the magnetic field happens with each pulse. So a magnetic field passing through the body induces charge or energy in the body. So this is one aspect of the Faraday law. The higher the magnetic field and the faster it rises to its peak, the more charge is produced in the body. It is the charge or energy produced in the body that determines the benefits and healing that PEMFs will stimulate the body to create. So both the inverse square law and Faraday's law need to be considered in the selection of a PEMF system to help and heal the body. There is no one size or type of PEMF that will meet everybody's needs for all kinds of problems. The right PEMF system needs to be selected to produce the desired results. The list, and benefit, the list of benefits and actions of PEMFs are covered more extensively in the education, blog, and video sections on drpollock.com and in Dr. Dr. Pollock's my book, Power Tools for Health. For those of you who want more in-depth information on this topic of what are PEMFs, there is a longer video in the video section of drpollock.com titled, What are PEMFs? In Depth. So I'm wishing you all the best in your journey and understanding what PEMFs are and getting help from your PEMF systems. Thank you, Dr. Pollock.